Okay, so I think it's pretty safe to assume that you've met Grievous from my Pokemon Bug Squad. I mean, he's pretty amazing, right? But do you know why I named him Grievous instead of some other centipede-related name? Like, why didn't I choose something more appropriate, like Doomdozer, or as Techipede, or Glenn? Glenn would have been a great name, but the answer is because I named it after a centipede I had in real life. Now, believe it or not, I've actually never had any super dangerous pets. Closest would have been my two scorpions, Sonic and Barkus. But even then, they aren't much of a threat as long as they can't climb out of the tank and I'm not being an idiot trying to boop them in the face with my finger. But all that changed one day when I got a phone call from my uncle. We'll call him... Uncle because it's convenient. Uncle is pretty much like me, likes to keep cool pets, except his collection is like a hundred times bigger than mine. He's also the type of person that actually goes out on excursions to find these animals, you know, pulling off like that Steve Irwin stuff. Rest in peace, my man. Anyways, one day he just calls me out of the blue and is like, hey, you want a centipede? Do I want a centipede? I don't know about you, but that's not a question I get asked a whole lot, so I wasn't really sure how to respond. Now, centipedes, not to be confused with your family-friendly millipedes, are potentially very dangerous. They're fast, unpredictable, freight trains of death, escape artists whose bite, depending on the species, can send someone to the shadow realm or the hospital. It's like a snake for people who don't want an actual snake, if that makes sense. Now, I've never actually considered keeping one before. I mean, I don't even know the first thing when it comes to taking care of a centipede. Therefore, my level of experience is definitely something I should consider before acquiring such a dangerous animal. So naturally, I said yes. Just a quick disclaimer, but always make sure you do proper research on the pet you are getting. Like, don't just go to your friendly neighborhood PetSmart and buy a T-Rex on impulse because it looked cool and was on sale, and then get home and be like, okay, now what? Had you done any research, you would have quickly learned that they make terrible pets, and then you would have most likely been eaten by now. My situation was a little different in the sense that Uncle hooked me up with pretty much everything that I needed. The centipede already came with an enclosure, substrate, and I already had plenty of food for it. But of course, I also did some additional reading up on how to take care of centipedes. Hashtag responsible owner. And just like that, Grievous was mine. I was even given two fuzzy butt darkling beetles as bonus tank mates. My uncle said they were supposed to eat the scraps the Grievous leaves behind, and if not, Grievous will just eat the beetles. I didn't know if darkling beetles ate bug remains, let alone made appropriate tank mates for a centipede, but uh, oh well. I ended up naming them Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Genius names. Grievous was a giant California tiger centipede, or the Scolopendra polymorpha. Those aren't as dangerous as its more tropical bird-eating relatives, so in the event I do get bit, oh believe me, it'll hurt like a bean curd, but I don't think it'll become like super serious. Unless of course I'm allergic, then... Mm. Give or take a few days later, and I'm getting a pretty good idea of what it's like to have a hundred-legged monster in my house. It's actually not as exciting as you might think. Like, aside from feeding it, where it wraps itself around its prey and eats it alive like an absolute boss, it barely moves during the day. Honestly, sometimes it stayed in the exact spot for days on end. I wonder if it's dead. Maybe I should boop it with a stick. Hashtag responsible owner. By this time, however, I've been doing a bit of further research and pretty much all the centipede guides I read said the same thing. Centipedes like to burrow, they need humidity so they don't dry out and can molt properly, blah, 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 biology stuff. And when I looked at Grievous, his substrate was just straight up sand. And I'm guessing Grievous hasn't been burrowing because, you know, sand is not the most structurally stable, that sort of thing. So that definitely got me a little concerned and confused because like majority of info suggested that centipedes need these things but grievous is a desert centipede and i can't imagine they have a whole lot of moisture out there definitely a lot of sand plus shouldn't i just trust my uncle you know he has a lot more experience than me <sighs> but then i got all sympathetic and concerned about the well-being of grievous what if he's unhappy or stressed because he can't burrow? What if he doesn't like Tweedledee and Tweedledum? What if he doesn't like sand because it's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere? What if he doesn't even like Grievous? What if he prefers another name? Like, 
Glenn. So I followed my gut and I made plans to relocate Grievous to another tank. This one was going to be bigger, taller, fixed with Eco Earth, a much better substrate for burrowing and retaining moisture. I mean, sure, his original cage had a lock over it, preventing any form of escape, but I figured this new one, it's tall enough, no significant openings. I'm not gonna regret this in the future. This will be fine. The transfer was pretty successful. There were no casualties there. I'm not quite an expert at reading centipede facial expressions, but I think Grievous looked happy. He immediately started burrowing and basked in the nice moist substrate like, oh yeah, where has this been all my life? Screw sand. So I left that feeling pretty proud of my decision. Hashtag responsible owner once again. Figured he probably won't want to eat unless he comes out. So I just decided to leave him for a while. And that while turned into a few days, then a week. The next thing I know, it's been two weeks and I haven't seen him come out once. He didn't even come out to eat the food I left out for him. Mmm, this is still fine. But eventually I decided to just carefully poke around just to see what Grievous has been up to. And I was expecting him to just shoot out of the ground like, Why are you disturbing my slumber? But after a while, I'm pretty sure I combed through this whole cage already. Where I was once calmly and carefully poking around, now I am frantically swiping through the dirt trying to find this blasted centipede. But thermal scans indicated he was not in the cage. Well, that day certainly sucked. You know, I just realized this while recording, but why didn't I just take him out, then put in the substrate, and then put him back in? Stupid. Hashtag irresponsible owner. My pride as a pet owner has just been shattered in a million pieces because my intuition about what I thought was best for my pet was wrong and I ended up paying the price. Oh yeah, totally not to mention that now we have a venomous giant centipede loose in the house. Better check those bed sheets before bedtime. Mom was definitely not happy about that. But, but I had the best intentions. Best intentions? Some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. Touche. I did try laying out some moist pieces of paper towels around the house, hoping it could lure him out. But another week went by and I figured either he died or he escaped to the outside. Either way, I wasn't getting him back. Honestly, it still boggles my mind how Grievous managed to get out. My best guess is that he used the corner of the tank to shimmy his way up and then somehow squeeze out of this really small opening in the lid. That's, that's honestly the only explanation I can think of. So yeah, not entirely sure where he is now or if he's even alive, but I mean, who knows? Maybe one day I'll go through a bunch of stuff and be like, oh, so that's where you've been this whole time. I do find some comfort in the fact that this usually happens to people that take care of centipedes. They say it'll happen at least once in your life. It's just a matter of when. So I mean, with that logic, I should be good for the next centipede I get. I do plan on getting another one, that's for sure. Probably of the same species. And this time, I won't be taking any chances. For now, I'm just stuck with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And my other pets. Thing 1, Thing 2, Elise, Natasha, Nebula, and Nezuko. They wouldn't leave me. I really have no idea how he got out, but I'm open to any theories that you may have in the comments below. The point is, what you think might be best for your pet isn't always what is actually best for them, especially if you're just going based off of pure feelings. But anyways, mmm, wow, an end card. <laughs> I haven't done one of these in what feels like years. How are you guys doing? Sorry about the long wait since my last video. I, I really didn't intend for it to take this long. Life, am I right? But just know that I got a lot of tofutastic things planned for this new year, and I even got something very special coming up later this month on a certain day. Bet you can't guess what day that is. But more details on that later. <laughs> That'll be it for this end card. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I didn't get enough opportunities to say this, but thank you so much for showing all that love on the last video. Really means a lot when you notice any of the small little details I snuck in there. So thank you. But I will see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and stay young. I really can't believe this pandemic is still going. Gosh dang it!